businesses are occasionally interested in knowing the impact of hiring an additional worker to their production process. In order to determine the additional amount of output produced by a worker, firms are trying to analyze the worker's marginal product. More generally, the marginal product of an input is the extra output generated by adding one more unit of input. For example, the marginal product of labor is the additional output resulting from hiring another worker. The marginal product of capital is the additional output that results from adding one more unit of capital. And the marginal product of land is the additional output from adding one more unit of land. The marginal product is usually measured in physical units, such as the number of cars or tons of steel. The key assumptions of measuring marginal product is that it focuses on one input being increased while all the other inputs are held fixed. This is the ceteris paribus assumption, meaning that all other factors stay the same. Typically, at low levels of output, increases in an input raise total output at a growing rate, so that the marginal product of that input is positive. For workers, this is when specialization typically occurs and workers can become really efficient in their areas of production. However, the benefits of specialization will diminish and workers may start to get in the way of other workers. When further inputs result in a slower rate of increase in total product, the marginal product, while still positive, starts to be reduced. The law of diminishing marginal returns is the observation in the short run that each additional unit of the production input, holding all other inputs fixed, will yield progressively smaller increases in output. The rate of increase in output slows down, eventually reducing the output. This is often referred to as total product increasing at a decreasing rate. As increments of one input are added, a point is reached after which the return achieved from each additional input falls, eventually becoming negative. When an increase in the input decreases the total output, marginal productivity is negative. Diminishing returns eventually leads to negative returns when the addition of one more unit of input actually causes a reduction in total output. The law of diminishing returns is based on several assumptions. First, technology is assumed to be constant. So there is, for example, no improvement in output per worker or per machine as a result of technological progress. Second, all units of a variable factor of production are assumed to be homogeneous or identical. The law of diminishing returns would not necessarily hold if, for example, new hires were stronger or better trained than their predecessors, or if the quality of a raw material was far worse or far better than the last one used. Lastly, the product has to be measurable in physical units such as weight or volume. Changing one input and holding the other input stable in the short run results in a change in the ratio of inputs to each other. The law of diminishing returns is therefore also known as the law of variable proportions.